Hello YouTube, this is a tour video for Stonegate, a private whitelisted server. And I just wanted to show everyone around so you can get an idea of what's involved in this server and just to see what we're up to. So this is more or less where the world spawn point is. So you'd start in here, you set this up as a spawn area. There's a force field that generates constantly to keep mobs away. Uh, we put the server rules for new players in here. As you can see we don't tolerate griefing. Uh, you have to t get approval for chunk loaders. Uh, more or less it's a lot of common sense stuff. Um, you can see we're also trying to keep lag under control. Um, a few outlawed items. Now these things aren't banned. You can make them. Uh, however, if you're caught using them, uh, you'll be punished. So there's a few ways we punish players, but uh, nothing too bad. There's permits and things you can buy, so you can have stuff like quantum, the Varja, and all that. Uh, some minor information. We do have a Dynamap running. That's about it for plugins. There is uh, some Figu Essentials and some basic teleporting stuff for that. And then you can go through this portal to where we're actually going to build our town. This is, as you can tell, this is a legit server, meaning everything built is legit as much as possible. Now, there is a caveat. I mean, you don't get crystals right out the gate. You don't get interlinking transport right out the gate so I mean some of those things had to be I hate to use the word cheated but yeah e expedited <laughs> let's say uh, this is a dangerous node we had to seal up it's full of well not right now but it's usually full of wisps um, this is Zant's house it used to be my house uh, it was once made out of marble and wood and then he basically took it over, shoved me out, and rebuilt it with Cytorium. So it's great for not having things spawn in here. I'm just gonna quickly go around Zant's house here. He's got a Thaumcraft area going. It's pretty basic stuff in here. He's got some basic machines up here. Just running. He's setting up a factory nearby. We'll show you that. over to Bean's house and you can see this area here that we've set up. This is a savanna biome. Uh, we are using Direwolf 20's uh, Feed the Beast mod pack. Uh, Bean set her house up in this little hill here. Go and take a quick look. I'm sure she won't mind. So she's gone for a bit of a natural look bit of a barrel sorting system. Uh, pretty modest. It's nice. Very cozy. Uh, she's really getting into bees and a little bit of thumb craft. She's got a little farm there. She's got all the trees. So she's collecting all the trees from the extra biomes. A uh, little farm. She's claimed <laughs> quite a large piece of land at the edge of city. We have an overview map uh, that has all the districts laid out. Started placing some roads to get some blocks in place. Uh, this is Zant's factory that he set up. It's basically a giant cube, <laughs> but it has a lot of internal space, so you can do whatever you want. Uh, we have certain zones. Uh, players pretty much follow the rules. Uh, we're just, you know, generally keeping things as you would in, in real life. You wouldn't go into people's homes uninvited. Uh, you wouldn't steal things out of their chests. You wouldn't just open doors if they're closed, etc, etc. Uh, so from the spawn area, that's this is originally our our first nexus. So I mean, it, it, it's going to move, and I'll show you where it's going to move in a second. Uh, Betrayer is probably our resident expert on most things Feed the Beast. Uh, he's built this arcane levitator already. I did ask his permission to go in here before making this. 
don't generally just trespass. Uh, he's got cow set up. He's the most advanced as far as technology and Thumbcraft as well. He's been a busy boy collecting heads. Um, he has a warded room. Oh, that's new. Hey, little guy. Uh, this is his Thumbcraft room. He sort of built it so that it has a bunker feel. Uh, but it's still modular. Now I can't even get in here, even as an op. But he sort of stores all his aspects. So we'll just go through this little area here. He's fueling all these thermal expansion machines and such with a big boiler that's fueled by these peat farms. They're complicated. We'll get to that in, in future Let's Play videos. He helped me build one too. So. They're pretty fun. He's setting up his own Nexus once he gets enough diamonds to uh, pay for a linking book stand. Uh, this piece of creosote coin. He's very fond of these modular rooms, but he, he does make them look nice. I mean, with the, the mossy stone and whatnot. Uh, he's got his own sorting system set up. It's very nice. Let's take a look in the basement here. Uh, he's got coal coke, uh, blast furnaces. He has a decent uh, system as well for sorting. Uh, it all comes out of these. <laughs> I can show you that in maybe a future episode. He has a frame quarry in the mining world. We, we might get to that. We'll see. This video might get a little too long. Uh, he has a s uh, power system here so you can put the block in. And it automatically detects using gate. There's the boiler. Uh, fueled by peat. It's maxed out. Looking good. He's generating power. Uh, he has a little force field set up. Now this is a place where he has a bit of a, a wither boss set up. He sets it up on here. Force field goes up, traps it in, and kills it. Let me seal this off. And he has a couple of spawn rooms as well don't know if I want to go down there, but he has a blaze spawner and wither skeleton spawner. Nah. I think he sealed that off. It's a little too dangerous to allow public access to, which is fair enough. He also has bees outside and all that, but don't want to linger too long in his house. So this is his access to the town. Now we're at the very edge of town, and it's where we sort of set up to start. Uh, it's mostly going to be industry and our personal estates sort of go in this valley here. Quickly go over to my house. Uh, I built this factory there yesterday. I'm going to turn that into a stone and cement and brick factory. So it's empty right now. I just finished building it. So a bunch of machines. I'll probably replace this area with a big boiler and that'll power all the machines. So, because all this cement and everything is legitly built. So, I'll show you why in a second here. And this is my estate. I sort of carved it out, claimed it with this hedge. Not the best security. Do use warded doors. Uh, I have a bit of a farm going over here. I'm uh, not using my power there yet at all, but it's set up. So there's a nice little farm. Keep cows because you need so many books to do anything with Thumbcraft. Okay, we'll go inside. This, I used to have a bunch of machines in here. I moved them all downstairs. As you can see, it's not finished yet. My enchantment table, which I should probably use soon before I die and lose my 26 experience. Underneath now, we've been expanding uh, the machine level. I have my own boiler. It's a little bigger than Betrayers. I don't, don't think he's happy about that, but keep that between us. And as you can see, there's a total mess in here, but I needed a cement factory, which basically is what this is. You just pump iron in or in this case I'm using steel at the moment because the yield is so much better for the amount of resources and it goes in makes concrete pumps it out and I have a barrel of 
almost 2,000 concrete, so that's good. Haven't really finished setting up my machines yet. This is just a sand generator. Uh, that's a brick generator, basically. You can just put this red rock in there. It makes clay. Uh, so this creates sand. I'll show you the power for the or the fuel source for this boiler here in a second. There's my sorting room. Uh, everything goes in this chest, gets pumped all the way through the system. Uh, this is my ender chest, personalized to me, to link up to my quarry. It does the same thing. And here I have two big tanks, just because I couldn't help myself, I had to build the biggest tank. And it's filling up with 2,900 barrel uh, buckets of creosote which you can follow along, which comes from these four coke ovens. And I have four of these blast furnaces ready to go. And speaking of, let's tuck that up. Need to put some iron in there. No. Down here is two peat farms which fuel the furnace. I haven't cleaned this room up yet, but I like to make my rooms look a little nicer. And we get out of here. Downstairs I have an enderman spawner and some strip mining I did early on. We'll get into that in future episodes. Took me forever to get this silver wood tree. They are a real pain. Over here is... Mm, I hesitate to call it a mega project, but when you're doing it legitimately, it really is. I'm building an arena. I've got the inside sort of laid out. Uh, there's a whole, making a whole series on building this from the ground up. Right now we're just quarrying out the middle of it. Uh, get into the details of why this is the way it is in the arena series. Uh, there's also a bank in town. And this is a fully functional bank. Now, this was all legitimately created, legitimate, everything else is legitimate. This is legitimately built. Um, however, some of the functionality of it was not. So I'll just get over here. Looks pretty much like a bank. As you can see, I have a force field zone. Now I am, because I'm the op, I'm on a pass card so I don't take damage. But normally when you cross this line, you get zapped for half a heart. And it tells you if you're carrying Omni tools or block breakers or anything that creates a redstone signal. It takes it from you. And you don't lose it. We're not that cruel. Uh, it goes into this return box. So it goes through a system down below and gets funneled up into there. So you go in and we are using a system of industrial credits as the main currency. And we're using tungsten as the core. So it's a tungsten based economy for the most part. One tungsten yields eight credits. Over here, a stack of 64 credits will give you one industrial diamond. All of these things are eliminated from the crafting recipes, so you can't create them manually. To limit certain things, we have this setup. So you buy a permit. Uh, I see two of them have been bought so far. It costs four industrial diamonds, so four stacks of industrial credits buys you a, a permit. And on the permit, it says you're allowed to own one piece of quantum or barja. So for each piece you want to build or operate, you need a permit for it. So that slows down that whole process. The whole point is that this is a difficult server. Uh, it's on the hardest difficulty level. If you starve, you will die. Uh, there is no stopping that and the monsters are tougher etc etc so the economy is also tougher the diamonds are pretty hard to get copper and tin are pretty rare um, tungsten is, is quite rare so anyway we're building this large um, the rest of the town is concrete but this is the expansion area so it's going to come out and we'll clean this up eventually and this whole area will be probably industry I think that's what it's uh, slated to be. And there'll be a bridge and stuff here. I mean, this is just early days, more or less. Uh, we built the pyramid. 
we did kill a wither so we have a beacon in the top of our pyramid not sure it's very cliche but uh, it looks cool so and this pyramid is going to be our nexus point now I built this by hand using stone steps um, didn't have a filler or anything at the time so there was no template this is going to be the new nexus so we'll have portal gates all around the sides once we get more crystal and uh, interage linking book uh, this I've commandeered this desert temple and made it my own so this, I turned this into my thalmcraft room more or less so it's not quite as uh, oh here a zombie uh, it's not quite as well stocked as the traders but uh, it's pretty nice, I think. And if I had my goggles, well, I might do that. I see a big shiny node that I've trapped in there. So when any wisps come out, they get nailed. Or trapped, at least. And I think I'll... So that is... The area set aside for the starting spawn area. It's not going to be much built in the desert. I'm just going to check my jetpack. It's getting precarious. Um, the road continues on the other side of this pyramid. Um, as far as the rules go, I mean, we are looking to bring new people in, but uh, they have to be sort of like minded. It's a mature server, there's no children running around. Um, we don't really tolerate griefing or excessive silliness, I guess. I mean, we are kind of a fun-loving group, but we want to do things the legitimate way. I mean, I, everybody's building their stuff. Nobody's getting things spawned in. You're limited to one teleport location, uh, so you can have, like, a home one, and that's it. And it seems to be going well. I mean, there's a few benefits with that you get more longevity out of a server i mean thankfully there's no ee uh, in the old sense so there's no incredibly overpowered thing a couple people have gravity guns and uh, there's a couple portal guns floating around but for the most part we're still sort of sort of starting off it takes a long time to actually do anything i mean I wanted to get these roads done, but all I had the material for was framing it. Uh, so I'm using things like wands of equal trade and stuff. But, uh, creeper explosions are on. And eventually this is all going to be, this is industrial zoned land. Oh, actually no, this is residential. I think industrial is closer to the bridge. So you have residential. It's a lovely, I think it's a meadow biome. This is going to be where the bulk of the skyscrapers and stuff go. Once we get to that stage. But again, you know, a lot of this right now is we're building up to get to the point where we can actually get enough resources to actually build this stuff. So that's more or less where we're at. This goes on and on and on and on. It's, it's a massive biome. We have regular biomes on, but I, I tend to think there's two biomes of the same type sort of linked together here. Oh, getting shot from below. So my jetpack's almost dead. But yeah, so it's a Dire Wolf 20. It's hard difficulty. Uh, people will help you if you come on, but um, it's whitelisted, so it's more or less by invitation. And that should be that, into the sunrise. At the very end of this road is a very large lake. I'm just going to build a massive port. But yeah, all sorts of fun. Uh, there's a group of us that plays, I'd say, on average, there's maybe one to three of us on uh, most of the time. And our peak's probably around six or so at a 
time. There's a couple more people that have just started recently. Um, but yeah, this is a nice little tour. This whole area. I'll try and get higher up. Actually, let me do this. I hate going into this mode, but for purposes of showing off the area, let's do that. So yeah, there'll be a large port that goes along this whole shore that would load up. And way, way, way in the distance is a massive ocean. And I'm talking massive. It's it's over 10,000 meters to the other side. Um, yeah, I think I'll just show you Gnome's house pretty quick here. Gnome's the first one to actually start settling in this expansion area. He's building a lovely little modern house. If I can find it. over here at the end of this road then there's a jungle biome that begins right after this yeah. uh, he's fantastic at well design in general but really excels at this kind of thing the interior furniture stuff really makes it look like a a living space. Even did a bathroom. Lovely tiling. I'm not gonna go upstairs, but yeah, that's just of it there. So thanks for watching, and if you are interested, I'll post a link below to our forums, and you can ask to join if you like. But bear in mind, the rules are strictly enforced, and. Uh, we back up quite often, so you know any griefing that happens can be fixed. But uh, rather not have to do that. So if you want to come, it's a lengthy period of time. We're doing everything legitimately, and it's nothing's really banned per se. Um, nuclear explosions are highly reduced, but still significant. So. You can have nuclear reactors if you're so inclined. And we're going to continue to expand. So we will update as Direwolf updates his mod pack for Feed the Beast. And the plan of long, long, long term is to migrate the server to a third party once it's large enough. Uh, third party host. My machine's pretty good, but uh, we've capped the server at 20 right now. So that's the most concurrent players we can have on. But we're generally not in any danger of, of reaching that, so not yet anyway. So yeah, uh, we'll do future p uh, Let's Play videos. Uh, this is just a tour for anyone who's you know looking for a server and just tired of the munchkin sort of mentality of everybody just blows each other up and race to the most powerful thing just to blow your neighbor up and all that. We'll introduce more plugins as they become available. I'm hoping that something like Towny shows up soon and we can do that. For now we're all sort of developing in this city. Uh, nothing says you can't start your own city. Um, so yeah. Thanks for watching, and if my world ever loads in, <laughs> and we'll see you soon. Take care.